Hey guys, my name is Kurt with Rock County Adventures. Today, I was invited to be part of uh, Season 3 of the Makers Challenge by Theo Kellison. It is where uh, 14 channels across YouTube and across the globe get together, make something cool out of stone, and post it for all you guys to see. So uh, make sure to follow along for uh, this week. Uh, each day, I believe, is two different channels posting. Uh, earlier today, Katie did. Uh, posted something and then, then me and then I will have the list of everyone that is um, taking place in this challenge down in the description so uh, make sure you uh, click on the click on the description after the video and uh, follow along so uh, anyways let's go ahead and get to it and start making something from stone okay guys so to start off this challenge we need some material so we're gonna uh, go through my slab box and find some. Let's zoom in for you guys. Okay. So uh, basically we're gonna polish a uh, stone to start off with and then um, as we go you'll see what we are making today. Whoops. So I need a piece that's roughly, uh, I need to get a couple uh, pieces out of one stone. So this one's nice, has a nice picture scene uh, there. And that's a potential piece. This one right here looks like this would be a good candidate for what I'm trying to go for. So uh, we're going to go ahead and put these back in the box. And this is the one that we are going to use. Let me dry it off real quick. So the reason I like this stone, uh, it has a nice picture scene right here, which is nice, like a blue sky, some the mountains, and so forth. So we're going to go ahead and cut out two pieces out of this. Um, I'm going to use a water bottle uh, cap as the uh, uh, stencil. And we're going to trace around. I think that's going to make a nice uh, piece to polish. And let's go ahead and do this one as well. There we go. So, yeah, so we will use that as one and this as one. Uh, so Let's go ahead and uh, jump out to the saw and get this going. Okay guys, so we are now going to uh, cut this out. Um, and again, we're gonna cut these circles that I traced out uh, for some cabochons. And uh, we are using the high tech diamond six inch slab saw with a thin centered diamond saw blade. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started and uh, start cutting. Second. I don't think you should destroy that landscape. I think you should think about it and do something else. Hmm. Never thought about it like that. Let me think for a second. That sounds like a maker's challenge. You know, I got a great idea. Let's change it up a little bit, make it more of a challenge, and uh. Yeah, one second. Let's see what my marker is. So, we're gonna change it up from what it is now. Give me just a second to dry my stone off. And let's use the back side. Let's see. I think we got a winner. 
Okay, so we were originally going to do uh, these capuchons, but I uh, agree that it would just ruin the picture scene. So, um, but for this one, we're going to cut along these lines. And uh, so we're gonna start here, cut there, slice off that little corner, do the same thing up top and preserve the landscape scene. Um, this right here looks like a river scene, uh, like a, a river coming through down the mountains and so forth. I think it's very beautiful. Uh, the blue sky and then this right here, it's kind of like you're up on a mountain looking out, uh, like, like you're up on a mountain in a cave looking out at the landscape and this is what you're seeing is the ceiling and then the uh, water, I mean not the water, the sky and the landscape and the uh, the stream right, right there. So. Um, we're going to go ahead and cut this out and get started and go to the next scene. I think this is gonna work out. So I cut off both pieces uh, and uh, it's a little bit better shape. So let's take a closer look at it. There you go. And I think it's gonna work out nice. So we're gonna go ahead and jump over to the flat lap and we're gonna kind of grind down the sides here a little bit and put a polish on the face of this. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, it's kinda hard to see this. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, we're gonna kinda uh, uh, grind down this edge right here, uh, so it's a little bit close, similar to this one. And then uh, uh, how this side has that little bevel there, we're gonna go ahead and continue to make all edges have that same bevel to it. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and dry this off and take a look at it real quick. I just realized as I am doing this that because when I use this on like using capuchons and stuff, I mainly work this area right here and typically you should move it all around so it evens out or it gets worn evenly. But as you can see, there is more of a polish going on right here along the outer edges and then the center is kind of it's not really doing anything because of how the disc is so we're going to actually have to uh, polish this by hand using some sandpaper um, so we're going to jump over to my workbench and uh, do that okay so we're going to start off with grit 400 and uh, work it from there and uh, yeah so Okay, so now since we have an, a nice smooth surface after moving up the stages between 400 to 600 to 800 and so forth, all the way up to 2500, we're now going to use the uh, flat lap again with, to uh, put a nice uh, polish on, on here. Um, the type of polish we will use is uh, cerium oxide. 
we're just gonna go ahead and uh, put a little bit of this on the uh, felt flap, uh, flat lap, or pad. And fill it with some water. And start it up. Gotta hold on to this tight because I do not want this flying out of my hands. We're gonna turn the speed up all the way up to six. And just hold it here for about five minutes. Okay, it's been about five minutes. We're gonna go ahead and turn this off. And we are going to take this inside, wash it off with soap and water, I'll be right back. Okay, this took a nice polish. So now we're gonna move inside uh, to the next step. Okay, so for the next step, uh, this is a package of razor blades um, that I'll be using in a second. This is a red acid-free mat board, uh, which I'm going to be using. Uh, and uh, I already uh, traced out the size I need, which is five by seven. And then this right here is just a, I've set this down upside down and traced around it just to kind of get a base uh, idea of the size of this. Uh, and I'm going to pull it back just a little bit, um, about a quarter of an inch, maybe five sixteenths. And we are going to trace that real quick. And then we're going to turn it around and do the same thing to this side. Um, and I'll show you what we are going to do with this in just a second. Okay, so we got that. And now we are going to go ahead, take the razor blade, and we are going to freehand cut the outlined area out. Okay, so now we're gonna take this and retrace this one more time to be on here. Oops, let's go ahead and trace it out. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out and be right back. Okay, so now since I have both of these cut out, right, so these um, will be glued together, and then we will be gluing this to the back of the uh, slab that I polished. Um, so that way it is a little bit um, it's a little bit smaller than the actual stone because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using this as like a uh, lift to uh, lift this up off the back of it so that it looks like it's kind of floating um, and in order to properly do this um, to make sure this white is not seen um, take a black sharpie and go ahead and color the edge all the way around the entire thing. Okay, so we have this, we have both of these completely blacked out all along the edges. It's fine if it's sloppy like that, it doesn't really matter, just as long as the side is pretty much blacked out. Um, so now we're, we are going to glue these 
uh, two pieces together um, and you can just use straight glue or you can use some ATG double sided tape um, 924 or super tacky which is 969 ATG um, I only have uh, 924 uh, which is just a roll like this and so we're just going to go ahead and stick both these pieces together are glued together and dried uh, we are going to take this and glue it to the opposite side of so this is the, the front side this is the back side the side with the uh, bevel um, we're going to glue this to the back side of that and a little bit later you will see the entire purpose for this um, so we're going to go ahead and set that there we will use again just some uh, 924 ATG tape I'm just going to put one strand, uh, I'll put two strands down the center. So now we have our tape and we're going to use uh, E6000 to uh, glue, glue this down. Now we're just going to put a couple of drops there, there. So once we have that uh, glue on there now, we're going to go ahead and uh, oops, let's take a piece of paper towel real quick, slide that over, and set that there. Take the uh, picture Jasper Stone, flip it over face down, and we are going to center this on the back of this. And once you get it centered, you're going to press down. Hopefully the, the tape will stick to it and help hold it in place. Then you're going to put some uh, weights on it. And we're going to let that sit and cure for a few hours. Okay, so now it's been a couple of hours and this ha should be somewhat dry. And as we let it sit overnight, it sh will... Uh, continue to cure and completely dry but I went ahead and added some uh, glue some uh, E6000 uh, glue around the edge uh, as you can see um, so the what we're doing with this is this is a piece of a uh, mocha brown suede map board um, I glued and taped the piece of uh, the red uh, two-ply map board uh, on behind it to make it a little bit more sturdy um, and this is going to be attached to this to where so that way there's a nice beautiful contrast and the whole purpose of this uh, attaching this to the stone is so that is setting off of the mat and then that way to the eye it appears as if it is floating on the map board um, which I'm guessing some of you may know where this is going uh, so right now we are going to uh, attach uh, this to the map board but let me grab this so that off the side real quick so this is how uh, so this fits in there perfectly um, but we're gonna build a wall of the same map board to uh, shadow box it um, this is a frame that I made a couple of years ago and I've been saving it for something special and this is the perfect occasion uh, so that's now sitting in there um, and we are going to go ahead and um, add uh, let's go ahead and put a couple one one piece of uh, two pieces of the 924 ATG okay. tape and add a couple drops along and around the uh, tape Okay, and that should be good. Okay, now we're just going to go ahead and center it on here. I'll turn it your direction. Okay. 
Basically, we want about an inch of space on the bottom and on the top, and roughly three quarters to uh, seven eighths on the sides. So, you just spin this around to me real quick so we can center it. I think that is a good thing there. So we're going to press down once you get it centered. And we're going to go ahead and put some weights over well, here. Before we do that, I'll go ahead and turn it back to your, your direction so you guys can see it. And we're going to go ahead and put weights on it and let it dry for a couple hours and then we'll come back and start building the shadow box. Okay, it's been a few hours now. Now we are going to go ahead and take this off and uh, take a look, see how this looks. I think it looks pretty fantastic. We'll get all this dust off in a little while. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and move that off to the and side. I uh, cut these out, which are uh, pieces of uh, mocha brown suede matting and 3 16 acid free foam core. Uh, I, I cut them 3 8 in width by 7 and by 5 to uh, fit the frame since the frame is 5 by 7. Um, and these we will be using as the shadow box walls. There should be four. Uh, the other one is off to the side. So I'll grab that and we'll do that in just a second. Um, we're going to use um, acrylic which also known as plexiglass, but in the custom framing world, um, it's called acrylic, um, mainly because it's a higher grade than plexiglass. Uh, plexiglass is normally just plastic glass, where acrylic can have certain um, like uh, UV protection um, films attached uh, to the acrylic to help preserve the color. And if you're art, if you have special like uh, artwork. Um, it'll help keep it from fading, degrading, um, and pretty much falling apart. Um, so uh, um, we're going to go ahead and just kind of peel the face. So we got that started, and now we're just going to go ahead and peel this off. Now, when you are using the uh, museum or pr uh, conservation grades, you want to make sure you don't get any fingerprints on this because it can be pretty hard to remove the fingerprints. So this is what we just took off. We're going to go ahead and face it down. But we're going to go ahead and peel, uh, get, get this one started. Okay, so I pretty much just got it started and peeled it back a little bit for each side. I don't want to pull it off completely because when you pull off the plastic, it creates a static field, and all the dust, if there's any dust in your area, it will come straight to this and stick and be really hard to get off. And we want to keep it as clean as possible. So we're going to drop it down in the frame. Um, and now we are going to take these pieces. Now, whenever I was cutting these to fit in, in the frame, I marked the back of them to, so I know what side goes with which side. So the star goes with the star. So we know this one's going to go right here. So I'm just going to pull this back just a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, how we're going to do this is we're going to go ahead and put a couple pieces of ATG tape on the back side of it. And then in between the ATG tape, we're going to use glue because depending on the environment where you live, there's a lot of humidity or super dry. I've seen these walls fall out of place and we want to do this to where likely you do not uh, need to take it apart. So after that, burn it down and then take each piece off. Okay, so now since I have uh, the ATG on here, we're going to go ahead and put a couple small drops of glue. And 
and the one that's right here. And one right there at the end. Okay. And before you put the glue on, it's always good to take a piece of tape and just kind of lightly buff it along the suede and pick up any debris or dust that's on there that you do not want on there. So now we are going to take this and set it in with the, the side that you marked black on the map board is going to go on the face of the frame. So we're going to go ahead and set that in. And then press against that so it sticks in place. So we're going to go ahead and do that to the other three sides. And okay, now since we have the walls put in place, the walls were, were built, like I said, three eighths. And the distance between here to the top of here is five sixteenths. So there's gonna be a one sixteenth um, of space between the plexiglass or acrylic um, and the stone so that way it's not touching. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and wipe off all the fingerprints off of here and get all this dust off. Let me go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, so now since we have this cleared off, we're going to go ahead and take off the plastic off of this and go ahead and secure it in the frame. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and put the frame on it and be careful that um, no dust or anything gets on the inside. And make sure that this is centered the way you want it. And make sure that it is sitting exactly where you want it, correct spacing and all, which looks pretty good to me shift it just a little bit hold it in place flip it over and now we're going to use the uh, Fletcher uh, point driver and shoot some points into the uh, back of the frame to, uh, to, to hold this in place like so. That one did not go in all the way.
Okay, so now since we have the points in place, we are going to take the uh, 924 ATG tape and align it to the back side of the frame, about an eighth inch away from the edge. then after that you want to grab some brown uh, paper or any color paper that you have um, this is what I'm going to use and I'm going to just place this it's kind of wrinkly but the only paper I have right now let's get this back some And we're going to kind of pull it nice and taut. We're going to stick this side down right there. Stick this side down right there. And pull this side nice and tight. And this side as well. And just keep burnishing it down, pulling it tight around the edges. And then when you're done with that, you're going to take your razor blade that you used, that I used earlier, and you're going to cut one eighth of an inch away from the edge. Just barely press down, go down all the way. Same thing to this side. And there you go. And now if you want to hang this, uh, so that's the top, you can take this and you can screw, you can measure down from the uh, top down uh, three inches, put, put a hole, put a uh, small D-ring, and then put a wire on the back. Or you can use a sawtooth hanger and put it into the frame um, after your after you let it fully the the glue fully dries for the piece because you don't want to hammer or drill and then the uh, stone on the inside falls uh, apart. So, uh, but I'm just gonna leave it like this because I'm just gonna lean it against the wall like so. Um, and uh, yeah, so we are done.